Hey guys, in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about some cool plugins that I think you should know about for your Wii U. Specifically, this will be on the Aroma custom firmware, but in my opinion, everything I'll be showing you here today is definitely a quality of life improvement in terms of bringing more functionality to your Wii U. But I'm just going to be brushing you up on what some of these plugins are and how to use them. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so to start things off, we're gonna head over to the official Aroma Guide and we're gonna look at the additional plugins and modules down at the bottom of the webpage. Now, if you followed my guide previously on how to jailbreak your Wii U, you probably have most of these plugins already. If not, I'll leave everything linked down in the description below for everything that I'm talking about here today. And we'll go through this one by one about the ones that I really think stick out here. So the Blue Pair plugin actually lets you connect other Bluetooth controllers to your Wii U. Now you can use a PlayStation 4 controller, you can use an Xbox controller, and you can even use a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. Once you have the app installed, like how we did through the official guide, all that's left to do is just hit the sync button on the console. This will bring up the pairing menu. And then you can grab your controller of choice, hit the sync button on that controller until your LED turns solid, like my Switch Joy-Con has. Go ahead and go back, I already paired this earlier. And then after that, you should be good to go to use whatever controller you wish. And for those of you who still want to rock a PS3 controller or something like that, the application should be installed onto your home screen for the DS3 pairing menu for Blue Pair. So you'd have to open up that application to pair those types of controllers specifically. Moving on, the next cool one on our list here is going to be SD Caffeine. Now, SD Caffeine allows for a wide range of modifications from single texture replacements to more complex changes like adding new levels or altering gameplay mechanics. It could also be used to install custom themes to your Wii U, like this awesome animated Pokemon theme that I got from over at the Theme Cafe Discord. And I mean, this theme is fantastic and really gorgeous to look at. But animated themes in general are relatively new, so I'm sure you'll be seeing a lot more of these pop up more and more in the future. But that's just a short rundown of what you can do with SD Caffeine. If you're interested in making your own themes, I do have videos that I'll be linking throughout this video, and down below I actually have a Wii U playlist if you might be interested. But moving on, and now the next plugin on our list is going to be Swip Swap Me, and this allows you to pretty much swap the TV and gamepad screen on the Wii U almost at any time. It does not work while using the VWii, but other than that, it works pretty much whenever. Let me go ahead and show you its usage. Now I'm going to be using Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze as my example here because I think it shows off Swip Swap Me pretty well. I'm just going to press A to continue. New game. And this game gives you an option for your display where you can select either the television or the Wii U gamepad. And this is what I'm talking about with Swip Swap Me. So I'm going to use the gamepad. Press A to continue, A to continue, A to continue, A to continue. And now just wait a moment for the cutscene to happen. Now you can see here we have Donkey Kong, but on the TV itself, it's staying on the Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze screen and actually just faded to black. So if you wanted to mirror this, you can open up the plugin configuration menu by hitting left bumper down on the D-pad and the minus button. Sorry, I only have one hand here. Uh, once the plugin menu is open, you can go up to Swip Swap Me, press A to open it and make sure the plugin is enabled. After it's enabled, you have a couple of options here where you can go to your button combos and actually select some hotkeys. So you can uh, enable screen button combo, which I already did, I set it to true. And if I hit the plus button and the right bumper, it'll change the screen automatically. But if you wanna do it manually, you can back up, go into screen mode. And right now I have it set to mirror gamepad. So if I hit B, B, and now we look at my screen, it's actually mirroring what we see on the gamepad and we can control both the screen and the gamepad at the same time. And that's exactly what Swip Swap Me does and I think that's pretty awesome. The next plugin we have is Give Me YouTube. Now, back in late October of 2022, YouTube started returning response 404 to the Wii U user agent platform, which it states right here. And what this basically did was the YouTube servers started blocking all connections from a client it sees as Wii U. So this plugin basically replaces the client ID of the app with no you, and that makes it have access to YouTube servers again. But it's worth noting that you can still use YouTube through the internet browser regardless, but this does bring life back to the YouTube application itself. Now you can grab all the plugins I'm mentioning today from the Homebrew App Store, but this one's a little different because we have a couple of added steps that we have to take. 
Now to get started, all we have to do on this page is just download the giveMeYouTube.wps and move on to our next step. Now, most of you probably don't have the YouTube application on your Wii U console. I'm gonna say 95% of you probably don't have it anymore. And those of you who do probably don't have the most up-to-date version of their application, which is what's needed to get this up and running. Funky Scott actually has an excellent tutorial on how to download and install the YouTube application. And in this description, he actually has a Google Drive link to the updated YouTube application. And I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can head over to Funky's channel and grab that download. Thanks again, Funky. But once you're in the drive link, you can go ahead and just select this YouTube app here and then select download. We're gonna download the entirety of the thing here. And while it's zipping, we're gonna move on to our next download here. You're gonna to need to have a SIG patch installed. That way you can get the YouTube application running on your console. So just go ahead and download this 01 SIG patch.rpx. And that is it for the YouTube downloads. Let's go ahead and start structuring our SD card. Okay, so pretty simple. We're gonna start by unzipping our YouTube application. Just right click and hit extract to. After that, we can delete the zip and we can go ahead and start with the YouTube application. So go ahead and head over to the root of your SD card. And if you don't have this folder already, go ahead and create one, right click, new folder. And we're gonna call this install. If you have this folder already, you can just go ahead and skip this step. Open up this folder. And then we're gonna open up that YouTube app that's in our downloads folder. Open it up again. And you're gonna see all these files here. Go back one, and you're gonna grab this main folder that just says YouTube app that's housing all those files. And we're gonna drag that into our install folder. After that's done, head over to the root of your SD card, head over to your Wii U folder, the environments folder, the aroma folder, the modules folder, the setup folder, and inside of here, go back into our downloads folder, we're gonna grab the sigpatch.rpx and throw that right into here. Head back over into your environments and if you have Teramisu, we're gonna do the same thing. So open up Teramisu, modules, setup, and throw the sig patches right into there. Head back over into environments one more time. We're gonna open Aroma one more time. Head over to plugins and we're gonna drag the giveMeYouTube.wps right into this folder. And that's pretty much it for structuring the SD card. And we can take it out and head back over to the console. And now that we're back on the tablet, we can go ahead and use the WUP installer and install the YouTube application. If you don't have the WUP installer, I recommend that you grab the Homebrew App Store, which houses all the downloads for everything that we're using today. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the WUP installer, open that up. You're just gonna wanna check the YouTube app. Go ahead and hit install, hit yes. And then you can select on whether you wanna install it to the NAND or the USB. Uh, USB is always safest, so if you have a USB hard drive or something, I'd recommend doing it there. I'm going to do it to the NAND, and we'll see how that goes. After that's installed, go ahead and hit OK to continue, and then we'll hit the Home button and return back to the main menu. And when that's all done with, if you go over to the right, you should have a new YouTube application over here on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it and just show you guys that it works. Uh, if you've done this along with me right now, if it doesn't work, try restarting your console and then launching the application again. Sometimes that resets it and makes it work. Everything seems to be booting up, which is good. And now you can see we're greeted with the account information. So I'm just gonna select a random video just to show you guys this works. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna select a video from my channel. Why not? Because then I won't get hit with any copyright stuff. Below average gaming. And I'll just start the first video that I see. Wow, and it started up like instantly. I have the volume off here, but. And GameCube games, but also set up some of your favorite retro systems as well. Heck yeah, that's pretty awesome. That was really quick too. I was expecting it to be a lot slower than that. Really cool, even surprising myself with this video. All right, so next up, we're gonna head over to the Homebrew App Store. Just give me one moment while I boot that up. And from here, I'm gonna show you our next plugin, which is gonna be the Gamepad Volume Changer. So this one's really cool. I already have it installed. Uh, what this basically does is if you've ever broken the volume slide bar on your Wii U and can no longer use it anymore, this will give you a way to configure it through the plugin menu. That way you can just adjust your volume through there, bypassing the need for the slide altogether. So I already have this installed. Let me show you how it's used. So just to show you guys, I have the volume slider turned all the way down. You're gonna hit the left shoulder down on the D-pad and the minus button. And then we're gonna go down into the gamepad volume changer. 
select volume and select enable. Make sure it says true instead of false. And then you can select whatever your volume is from there. I'm gonna leave it at 15 so you guys can hear it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and back out of the plugin menu. And it stays the same volume no matter what. And next up on our list is Save Me. This homebrew allows you to back up your Wii U and VWii save games directly to your SD card. Uh, most of you following any guide, it's pretty standard to have this application installed, but a lot of you might not have used it or tested it out. So I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to back up one of your game saves. Let me just go ahead and return home. Open up the Save Me application. And then from here, you can select Wii U Save Management or VWii Save Management, which I'm gonna select Wii U at this time. And I'm gonna go ahead and select Super Smash Bros. And then from here, you can see backup save data, restore save data, wipe save data, and import and export for loading. But I'm just gonna go ahead and go to backup save data, select my storage slot, which is empty currently. And I'm just gonna leave it at zero and just press A. And then just give this a moment to finish. And after that's done, you're all set. You can do that with pretty much all your games now. That way you won't have to worry about losing all your files. Next up, and this will be the last one of the video here, and this is Environment Swap. Now, this one's really useful because if I just go ahead and return home for a second, I already have this installed, and then I'll show you what I mean. Now, you can see that I have a retroarch.rpx file here. When you're on Aroma, it won't read RPX files the same way Teramisu will. So in a sense, RetroArch will not work and is considered a legacy application at this time. But if you open up the application to reboot to Teramisu, which is what we just downloaded, this will boot us right into the Teramisu environment loader and I believe into the homebrew launcher. And just like I said, it booted you into the homebrew launcher, and now you can access your legacy applications like RetroArch. It also comes with a convenient way to swap back into the Aroma environment. So this is pretty convenient because it bypasses the need of you having to swap environments yourselves by holding one of the buttons when you start on the console or opening up the health and safety application. But I'm just gonna go ahead and return back to Aroma, and then I'll be wrapping up this video. And just like nothing happened, now we're back on the Aroma custom firmware. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here, guys. I appreciate you all who stuck it out with me to the very end. If you have any questions, leave me some comments down below. And if you have anything that I think I should cover in a future video, go ahead and let me know. But until then, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Adios.